Hi there. Now that you've got your light box together and you've set up your Chroma Scan app with your language preferences and some names that can be recognized, it's time for the main event, scanning and tagging your photos. Now, Chroma Scan works quite a bit differently than other scanning technologies today, and mostly it's because it does more. The scanning process is designed to be hands-free and mostly voice activated, so I'm going to spend a few minutes with you going over how to scan and tag your photos. Once you do it a few times, I think it's going to be a breeze. After you've connected your battery to the unit and you've placed the iPhone on top of the light box, take a second look to make sure that the iPhone is aligned right up to the corner of the wall of the light box and the thumb bar. That will keep your iPhone and your photos in alignment and will help us achieve a better crop when we, uh, when we take the photo. Now once you click on the scan button, you're going to see a screen that looks just like this. This might seem a little odd to you at first. I mean, after all, the camera is turned on, it's pointing at a green surface, and it's all black. Well, why is it mostly black? Well, as you might have guessed from the name of our company, we use a technique called chroma keying to remove the green background from the scene as we zero in on your photos. Uh, for now, we've just kind of blacked it all out. The red bar at the top is an overlay that turns green when we detect that one of your photos is lined up to the back of the light box. Those panels around the outside are where we list the date, location, and the people that we're going to add to your photos as they're being captured. Once you're on the screen, Chroma Scan is always listening. Now, it's nothing nefarious. We're not eavesdropping. We're listening for predetermined commands that we will use to guide you through the scanning process. And let me sort of go over how this works. Chroma Scan actually has two different kinds of voice recognition technologies that we use together in scanning mode. The first is called offline recognition. And it's called offline because all of the recognition happens right on your iPhone. We have a small dictionary loaded in the app, and when we recognize one of these words, we act on it. We use offline recognition to respond to your scanning commands and to recognize the names of people that you've imported into Chroma Scan, either through your contacts, or a JEDCOM file, or a batch list, or even like the onesie twosie mode. Uh, the second kind of recognition engine that we have is called an online system, and it's called online because we take snippets of what you say and have it transcribed by some giant server and then sent back to us. This is very much the same way Siri works. We use online uh, mode to recognize things like dates and locations. These are things, especially locations, that would be very difficult to do offline because you would need a very large vocabulary. So how do we switch uh, between these two modes? Well, it's actually quite easy. We have a special offline command called Chroma. When we hear you say it, we'll switch from offline mode to online mode and listen for you to tell us the date and location of your photos. After we hear a long enough pause, we'll automatically switch back to offline mode. If this sounds complicated, don't worry. After scanning one or two photos this way, it'll be natural to you. Here are some examples of offline commands. Notice that they are scanning commands or people's names. No need to remember these commands now. I'll explain them uh, in greater detail in a little bit. Um, here are the online commands where we tell Chroma Scan the date and the location of the photos. Uh, it's always date first followed by a short natural pause and then the location. Notice how in the last two examples I've used some very specific locations. Uh, why do this instead of just the, the city and country? Well, behind the scenes Chroma Scan tries to find location details down to the GPS coordinates so that we can tag your photos down to the meter. So if you give us just the city, we'll take the longitude and latitude of the city and we'll find the center of it. However, if you give us a well-known landmark or an address, we'll geotag it accurately. And later when you use that metadata, it will map right to where it is, just like the photos that you take with your iPhone today. Um, now, not all landmarks will be recognized, but as a rule of thumb, if you can type it into your Maps application and find it, we should too. Okay, let's dive into the commands. It's really just seven commands, and once you start wielding them, uh, you'll be a pro. Now, if you're a non-native speaker or prefer to use one of the supported languages other than English, ignore this chart. We'll describe the non-English commands in another section of the Chrome Scan site, uh, but for now, let's just dive in. Um, so we talked about the command chroma, and that basically switches us from the offline recognition mode to online mode so that you can tell us uh, the date and location of the photos. Uh, clear people basically is an interesting command. Basically, it allows us to 
um, keep the date and location information, but remove whoever's in the uh, in the people panel. And the reason you would do this is, let's say you've got a bunch of photos from a wedding. They're all in the same date and the same location, but you have different people in them. Well, um, you can use the clear people command to remove people that are in a photo so that when you put the next one through, you can put new people in and, um, and you don't have to keep saying uh, the date and location. So it's kind of a time saver. Clear all basically clears everything, the people, the, uh, the date, and the location. Capture, of course, uh, takes the scan. Uh, and backscan is an interesting feature. Basically, it is like a capture command, except what it's for is for scanning the back of the photo. So a lot of our photos have little notes and important historical information on the back of it. We want to preserve that. And so um, when you want to capture one of these things, you flip the, the photo over, say the word backscan. It's very much just like a capture uh, command. But what it tells us is that this is the back of the previous photo. And what we'll do is, in the gallery, we will bind those two together. Auto scan is another interesting feature. Basically, it saves you from having to say the word capture all the time. So if you turn auto scan on, uh, there will be a little green indicator in the top uh, left-hand corner. And whenever you slide your photos into the light box and they're up against the back wall and we uh, detect it, will make that indicator turn green, and whenever that indicator is on for a second or longer, uh, we will take the photo automatically. Finally, the pause command is, is a battery saver. So when you put your iPhone on top of the Chroma Scan light box and you've got it in scan mode, uh, it's actually using a lot of CPU power to keep that camera turned on all the time. And, uh, and the reason for that is, is, is because it's, it's, a, it's sort of like capturing video. There's 30 frames a second that are going through it. And, um, and when you say the word pause, what we do is we cut the, the camera part of it off. So if you need to futz with your photos, you need to sort through stuff, just say the word pause, and that will sort of save your battery. You can do whatever you need to do, and then when you're ready to resume scanning, just say the word pause again. All right, let's get to scanning, shall we? Now, here are some photos that are on my desk, and I pulled out three down at the bottom because they were all taken at the same place in the same date. Uh, now, some of you might be looking at these photos and thinking, hmm, is that Tony, and what the heck is he wearing? Uh, yes, that is me, and what can I say? It was the 70s. Now, my guess is that these photos were taken around 1974. Uh, do I know the exact date? No, I don't, um, but I do want to approximate it. Um, you're not going to know all of the exact dates of every single one of your photos, but you should try to approximate dates as closely as possible so that when you're done scanning your photos, your photos more or less show up in chronological order, and it's easier to work with them. Um, so here are my photos, uh, and let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is issue the auto scan command. You'll notice that when the commands are recognized, there's an auditory confirmation. Auto scan. Next, I'm going to issue the chroma command so that I can set the date and location. Notice the audio alert and how that little pink bar turns green and is now animated. You should give the date and location after hearing this audio tone. Don't dilly-dally or we'll go back to offline mode and you'll get an unfriendly error message. Chroma. April 15, 1974, Almaden Plaza, San Jose, California. Next, I'm going to tag the photo with my own name. Tony Knight. Okay, now I'm set. I'm next going to slide the photo into the box along the back wall and position it somewhere left of center and remove my hand. As soon as I move my hand out of the way, Chroma Scan is going to try to detect the photo using a technique called rectangular detection. Uh, this is part of the dark art called machine learning, where we try to teach the camera that would otherwise just be looking down at a blob of pixels that there's something specific to draw a crop around. Most of the time, this cropping comes out really well, but there are some cases where we don't get it exactly right. This is usually when your photo's content might include some strong rectangular shapes that uh, might confuse our rectangle detection algorithm. In these cases, there are a few things that we can do while we're scanning to help the program out, and failing that, we have a way to capture the entire screen and then crop it out using um, some of the photo editing tools that we have built right into the app. Uh, so let's go.
Did you guys notice how the red bar at the top turned green after I put the photo in? The reason for this is that our rectangle detector found the photo lined up uh, where we expected it and turned the bar green as soon as we detected it. Since I have auto scan turned on, we took the scan automatically after the bar stayed green for a second. I also did something wrong on purpose when I placed the photo in the back of the box. I didn't place the top of the photo flush with the back of the box, and that caused the photo to be skewed ever so slightly. Now, I'm doing this on purpose so I can show you uh, a little bit later some of our photo editing tools that we've built into ChromaScan that not only fixes this problem, but can also clean up your photos right on the phone without having to go to Photoshop. But for now, let's go do some more scans. So here's a photo we're having a little problem detecting. When we have a good detection, the green bar appears and we see the photo clearly. Uh, in this case, we're not seeing the photo clearly, and often the solution is to simply reposition the photo against the back wall. If that still doesn't work, you can just tap the screen and we'll take a full screen image, and then you can crop it later using our photo editing tools. But this should be fairly rare. Okay, I've done my three photos, but there's a couple more that I want to scan, and one of them has some writing on the back, so I want to show you guys how to use backscan. Let's pause the screen to save my battery while I sort through my photos. Pause. Okay, now that I'm back, I'm going to issue the pause command again to get the camera back, and then issue a clear all command to wipe out the metadata that's on screen. Pause. Clear all. Chroma. September 1st, 1961, Fresno, California. Letty Peter. Clear all. Chroma. September 1st, 1957, Honolulu International Airport. Letty Peter. Now this photo has some writing on the back and it's the perfect time to use the back scan feature. If you use back scan in auto scan mode, just say the word backscan right after you've taken the front image while the photo's off screen. You will see the word backscan in red letters on screen just to let you know that we're going to associate the next image with the previous image. If you made a mistake and you want to cancel backscan, just say backscan again and it will simply return back to its normal mode. Backscan. Okay, that's it for scanning. Now let's go take a look at what we've done in the gallery. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. Who needs a break? Yeah, I know you didn't. Let's take a look at the photos we just took, and I want to introduce you to our built-in photo editing tools. So, um, in looking at the gallery, you'll notice that they are displayed in chronological order. Second, there's one icon that stands out. It's the one that we did a back scan of, and it's got that little dog-eared icon next to it, uh, so it tells you that it's double-sided. Let's tap on it and you can see the tags we created. Also, that little flip around icon that's enabled down in the bottom toolbar uh, tells us that you can click on it and see the back of the image. As we keep scrolling through, you'll see that some of our images have a little green around the edges from not being aligned with the top of the box. Let's fix them. I'm going to go to the first image I want to work on and click on this little pen tool icon. That brings up my photo editor. This photo has a little green around the edges from not being perfectly straight, but I don't want to crop it. Instead, I'll click on Orientation. The Orientation tool allows me to rotate my images left or right, but it will also allow me to fix perspective errors. 
I'm going to touch on that little circle with the arrows next to it, and I'm just going to move it slightly to the right. Just like that. And now I'll apply it. This next tool needs a little perspective correction as well, and I'll also crop a little bit off so you can see how this tool works. With the crop tool, just grab a corner and nudge it over past the green just like this. The next photo started off a little dark anyway, and there are some tools that we can use to bring out some of the details without having to go to Photoshop first. Let's tap on the photo editor and select the enhance tool. These tools are a bunch of weirdly named presets that will help improve the quality of your scans, and I'll just tap through some of them just so you can get an idea of what they do. If you don't like these presets, you can manipulate some of the most popular settings like brightness, contrast, highlights, and shadows directly and sort of create your own recipe. Okay, so that's it for editing, and you can see my gallery looks a little bit different now. Uh, one of the photos is certainly a little punchier. I got rid of some of the green around the edges, and um, I was able to do it right within the Chroma Scan application. Now, this isn't necessarily a replacement for Photoshop, but it is super convenient. Anyway, I'm going to wrap things up right now. I feel like I've gone on way too long. But if you have any questions about scanning or editing or anything like that, you know, drop me a comment or send me a question either on Facebook or Twitter, and I'll get back to you. Okay? Thanks.